Over time, 3D Mario games got increasingly linear, but after the release of Super Mario 3D Land and Super Mario 3D World, Nintendo would shift dramatically in the opposite direction with Super Mario Odyssey. Released in 2017 for the Nintendo Switch, Odyssey brought back the more open style of Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine, and received extremely high praise on par with the Galaxy games. Since then, it's become a somewhat divisive entry for possibly going overboard with its attempts at a return to form. Without further ado, let's dive into Super Mario Odyssey. Super Mario Odyssey begins with Bowser kidnapping Princess Peach to force her to marry him, with Mario failing to save her and losing his hat in the process. Mario is blasted away to the nearby Cap Kingdom, where he meets a ghost-like entity known as Cappy. He reveals that his sister, Tiara, was also kidnapped, and tags along after taking the form of Mario's hat. They eventually find a ship called the Odyssey, with the goal of collecting power moons to fuel the ship and travel to new kingdoms to stop Bowser. Compared to previous 3D Mario games, Odyssey has quite a bit of storytelling throughout the adventure. Bowser and his minions often have story reasons for wreaking havoc on each kingdom, such as stealing a prized wedding dress from the Lake Kingdom and harvesting flowers for a bouquet in the Wooded Kingdom. Visually, Odyssey is superb. Pretty much everything looks spectacular, from the incredibly detailed characters to the unique visual style of each kingdom. While I don't think Odyssey is my favorite soundtrack in the series, it's still great. Each kingdom has a unique sound that fits the setting, but the two vocal tracks are definite highlights, even if the lyrics are a bit on the nose with their references to the series' roots. Odyssey's gameplay takes the basic structure of 64 and Sunshine, and greatly increases the scope of everything. There are 15 main kingdoms, along with 3 bonus ones with extra challenges. Most of the kingdoms have a story quest, with at least a few missions that end with a power moon or a multi-moon that's equal to 3 power moons. There isn't a hub area this time, and after collecting a power moon, you can resume playing from there without having to re-enter each area. This is a great change from 64 and Sunshine's gameplay structure, since most kingdoms have dozens of power moons that can often be found along the way to the main objectives. To access the next kingdom, a certain number of power moons must be collected, and this total doesn't even have to include the plot-related moons, which makes reaching each goal incredibly flexible. There's also a hint system, with a parrot named Takatu giving clues to reaching certain power moons, and a hint toad that can mark key locations on the map for a fee. There are around 880 unique power moons, with a maximum of 999 from buying extra moons in shops. Around 120 are required to fight the final boss, but over 400 can be obtained before finishing the game. The remaining moons become available in the post-game, but only 500 are needed to unlock the final secret kingdom. The amount of optional moons has benefits and drawbacks. Across multiple playthroughs, the chances of reaching the end with the exact same moons feel fairly low because of how many options there are. On the other hand, having so many moons means that quite a few require minimal effort to collect, and can feel like filler when trying to achieve 100%, especially since the reward for completion is fairly insignificant. One of the biggest changes to the gameplay is the lack of lives. If you die, you simply lose 10 coins and restart at a checkpoint, with no fear of getting a game over. Coins are used to buy costumes or power moons, and many of the outfits are charming references to past games in the series or to other characters. Most of the kingdoms also have purple coins that can be used to buy special regional costumes and souvenirs to decorate the Odyssey. In February 2018, a new mode called Luigi's Balloon World was added for free. By talking to Luigi in most kingdoms after finishing the game, you can either hide a balloon for other players to find or hunt for balloons that other players have hidden. Each balloon has a time limit and an entry fee, and tougher challenges require more coins, but give more coins in return. While this is completely optional, it's a fun way to test your ability to quickly navigate through certain kingdoms, and is also great for quickly collecting coins to unlock all of the outfits. There's also amiibo support. Scanning any amiibo will mark the location of a moon on the map for free, but certain ones also unlock costumes without having to buy them in the shop. Wedding-themed Odyssey amiibo also have bonus functions, such as granting temporary invincibility, giving extra hit points, or revealing the locations of purple coins. Odyssey's gameplay truly shines because of how versatile Mario is. His moveset includes returning moves like the triple jump and long jump, along with new moves like a mid-air dive and throwing Cappy. 
It's possible to bounce off Cappy for extra height after throwing him forwards, or throw him in various directions to attack or pick up items. The fluidity of Mario's moveset makes it a blast to quickly traverse the large kingdoms, and even navigate certain areas in unintended ways. Cappy can also be thrown at specific enemies and objects to capture them. Capturing something allows Mario to control it, leading to even more options to explore certain areas or find specific moons. Some involve simply controlling an obstacle to move it out of the way, but most instances involve playing as enemies or characters with their own unique abilities. Being able to go around as iconic characters like Goombas and Bullet Bills, or a variety of new characters and species, can be incredibly fun and rewarding. Odyssey's controls are also really good for the most part, and add a lot to the overall enjoyment of the game. Mario feels incredibly responsive outside of a few instances. There's a bit of a learning curve because of how many new and returning moves there are, but it can be incredibly satisfying after getting the hang of certain techniques and when chaining moves together. The camera can also be a bit finicky at times, but for the most part, I think Odyssey has some of the best controls in the series. Basic movement and the camera use traditional controls, but certain moves utilize motion. Cappy can be thrown by pressing a button or flicking the controller, and some captured enemies have abilities that are slightly better when activated with motion controls. While the motion controls are generally responsive, shaking a pro controller or even the Switch itself in handheld mode is much harder than detached Joy-Cons. There aren't many moons that require the motion exclusive moves, but a way to perform these moves with a button would have been a welcome inclusion. There's also optional gyroscope aiming for certain capture forms, but even as someone who usually likes this feature, I find Odyssey's gyro sensitivity to be a bit off, and prefer using the right analog stick instead. Despite its flaws, Super Mario Odyssey is one of my favorite games in the series. The gameplay and level design are top-notch, but I do wish there could have been fewer moons in favor of more interesting objectives. It doesn't help that I got everything on my first playthrough when the game launched, so the thought of collecting everything again isn't particularly appealing in comparison to how straightforward some of the previous games are to complete. On the other hand, the game feels a bit short when going for the minimum requirement, so I think collecting around 500 to unlock the Final Kingdom might be my preferred way to play it in the future. To some extent, I still appreciate the ability to decide how long this journey is, and the wide selection of moons to collect as a way to incentivize exploration for those who are interested. If you're having a blast with the game, you can spend dozens of hours thoroughly combing each kingdom for every collectible, but you can also get to the end fairly quickly if you stick to the main path. With that, we've gone through every 3D Mario game as of now. I really enjoyed getting to revisit a few of my favorite games ever, and it was also nice to have a reason to go through the ones I haven't played in years. With the 35th anniversary celebration continuing into 2021, I'm excited to see where the series goes from here. At some point, I'd like to go over the 2D games, and even some of the spin-offs, specifically more of the JRPG side of the franchise, but for now, I think I'll take a break from Mario reviews for a bit. I hope you enjoyed this look at one of my favorite franchises, and thank you for watching.